Welcome, this is Wyatt Shurkamp representing Imaginic Technologies. I wanted to provide a technical tip with Autodesk Plant 3D. This will be in 2016, but uh, this technical tip will actually apply back to multiple past versions of the program. Uh, we're going to cover plate and grading, not from the most essential standpoint, but uh, more of the advanced techniques, how to get custom shapes of grading to move around equipment, piping, and uh, level gauges. Uh, we'll design this uh, using polylines, hatching, and actually grouping as well. And uh, it, it should be a technique that you can apply to multiple scenarios as needed. We've already seen some basic setup, um, drawing polylines and, and uh, rectangles. Let's go ahead and provide an example of that, just your basic rectangular shape. We can, we can click on the grading option using existing polyline and uh, select that and we've got a nice grate there uh, moving that out you can see the existing polyline is still represented we could apply this technique to this existing structure if we already have a polyline drawn to the top of the grid so we can also look at another method using a new rectangular if i were to uh, snap this to the existing grid no polyline required and uh, there is our grading like so now uh, th that works really well for your basic rectangular shape what if we need to uh, explore some other options looking at this existing structure we can see uh, through the equipment we've got this level gauge we may want to uh, avoid with some grading and uh, we can copy that that grading set from one vessel to another. So jumping back into this, uh, here's, here's one example. Um, the, the downside to, to drawing something out like this using polylines is the, the length of time it may require to build something like that. Uh, the nice thing about this is as we choose this existing polyline, you can see that it, it applies that shape quite nicely and uh, then we can move this into position. Uh, we can use just the, the regular move command, finding the corner point and just bringing that up into the corner here. That looks pretty good. Now let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, maybe something a little more simple. If you're looking for um, you know ease of use and, and, and something quick, um, right here I've got applied another polyline. This was a regular polyline drawn uh, using arcs rather than a circle. The issue that we have, um, if we tried to apply um, our plate to this using existing polylines, choosing both of those, we're not going to get that cut out from there. So one workaround that we can apply is to actually draw this out half of it at a time and then mirror this over. Now we can apply the same, te same technique choosing all of that and uh, now we've got uh, you know quite quite a similar shape you can see that can also be moved into position so if you do have you know one particular set that you're you're comfortable with and you, and you're, you like what you're seeing there um, you know just go ahead and copy that from one uh, to the next let's take a look at the last option this is usually where people begin and uh, they they may seem to, to get a little bit of frustration out of it they just draw a circle the program is expecting a polyline so as we choose this and we, we click create we select those options um, it's going to, to let us know definitely that uh, we should be seeking out a polyline so uh, converting that over won't work and uh, so that method um, you know just from a simplicity standpoint um, it, it just won't work so um, there are some techniques that we can apply this will be using hatching and grouping it's drawn out very very simply actually by just using a circle and a rectangle. So just to get that in place, let's just take a look and see what that looks like. Let's go with six foot eight by six foot eight. And I may apply a circle to the uh, center of this with a diameter of six foot two. We can utilize the hatch command to simulate the plate and grating. Looking through here, it uh, actually tells us what the hatch pattern and hatch scale is. So 
One thing to also note is the thickness that we can apply to that hatch. So uh, using the traditional hatch method with the settings of net, let's go with a 10 for the scale pattern, like I mentioned is net. And we're just going to go ahead and pick the uh, internal points here, just like that. That provides a nice uh, simulation as far as the, the grading goes. What we can do from here is actually explode this. So we'll use the uh, traditional explode command. Uh, what this has left us with is quite a few lines. We'll erase the original source objects now, the circle and the rectangle. Okay. And selecting these objects, you can see there's quite a few of them, 246. One word of caution on this, as far as grouping goes, um, it, it may begin to bog the system down depending on how many times you use this particular technique. A um, hundred, a thousand, a couple thousand of these lines could start bogging your, your program down. But uh, we'll go ahead and set the property here of thickness to one inch to match the rest of that. Okay, looks pretty good, but uh, of course you don't want to be selecting all these lines. Uh, you may have some problems if you need to move something. So I like to use the command classic group. You uh, could use the, the regular new grouping command if you want to. Let's go ahead and uh, name this. Make sure that we've got the check mark for selectable. We'll apply new. Do a window select across the objects. That looks great. Say OK on that. And you'll notice when I select this, I do have a center point in the middle of that. That's simply because I've got group display mode set to 1. So you may uh, consult the help file to see what 0, 1, and 2 um, will get you, but uh, that seems to work out pretty well. You can move this around now just using that center point. But in this case, we actually do want to move this from the corner. And we'll grab that and slide that into position. Okay. All right. Well, let's see what that can do for us. We'll go ahead and delete those, hide off a couple things. Looks pretty good. Save that. And we'll head back to our processing area. Go ahead and reload this and show that unit. There we go. You can see method one here, not too bad. I mean, we've been able to, to hide off a couple things, right? Looks actually fairly decent. Uh, the second method, we didn't uh, worry about the piping coming through there. Uh, same with the third method. So wrapping this technique up, overall it comes down to what type of level of detail you require, what uh, your particular situation needs, and, and what technique you're most comfortable with. Hopefully that added some value to you, and we'll see you next time.